Hello, Sparkfellas. Welcome back to Advancing Spot, brought to you by Advancing Analytics, your friendly neighborhood engineering, AI, and analytics consultancy. Yes, I know it's been a few weeks since we've had a video, because I've been on holiday. So, you know, sorry. It is that time when we look back at the previous month and say what has changed in the world of Databricks since we've been away. So looking back in November 2023 and saying what's in the release notes, what's happened, any new Databricks runtimes, what can you expect if you start having a look? Now, I have got to say, it's a fairly quiet month. There's a couple of big things and then lots of fairly quiet things. And then it's just really, really quiet. I'm assuming in the lead up to the festive period, people are just tired. I get it. I, I get it. Don't worry. Right, so we're going to have a look at the notes, have a talk through, and see what we think. As always, if you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you are thinking about learning Spark over the holidays, don't forget to check out our online course with the Spark Fans discount. Just type in Spark Fans as a coupon code. That's all you need to do. We've got it there. You can use that. And then, yeah, let's go and have a look. Right, so November 2023, I'm on the Microsoft Azure flavor of the release notes. Obviously, use the release notes that are for your particular cloud where you're using Databricks. And we're going to skip right down to the bottom and start from there and work our way up. So, what's happening in the world of Databricks? So, firstly, Lakehouse Federation now supports Google BigQuery. Lakehouse Federation is this thing where we can now essentially register external data sources in Unity Catalog. So, we can take a SQL Server, we can take BigQuery, we can take Snowflake, and we can just say, add this as an external catalog inside Unity and then see the schemas, see the tables, and query it as if it was part of our lake house. Now that pushes the query back down to that source. The same as if you made a data frame and you pointed it at a JDBC connection. It's going to push that back down to that database source. Similar things, but you can now just register it directly with Unity Catalog and therefore secure it and have it looking almost invisible. It's just part of your data hierarchy. People don't need to know that it's not already in your lake. So big query. Now available to go and have a play in Federated Lakehouse. Uh, Derek Marketplace, that is the online sharing place where you can get lots of different Delta sharing sources for loads and loads and loads of different uh, data sources from various different providers. Have now got Databricks Solution Accelerators on there. Uh, the Databricks Solution Accelerators are use case specific pre built snippets of code, like a notebook that does, I don't know, um, risk management for insurance, a notebook that does. I don't know, stock outage predictions, particularly use cases across different domains. And they just have usually some kind of machine learning model and you just plug it in. So you can now go into Zedrix Marketplace, browse the solution accelerators and just download it directly into your workspace. It's pretty cool. I've uh, got a new Zedrix runtime, 40.2 is in beta and then later in GA, we'll have a look at that uh, once we've gone through the main platform things. Big thing, automatic enrollment into Unity Catalog for new workspaces. Now, adoption of Unity Catalog is this ridiculous thing. Unity Catalog gives you so many features, it is nuts. There's Lakehouse Observability, Lakehouse Monitoring, which literally just got announced this week. We'll do a separate video about it very, very soon. Um, you've got all the security aspects. You've got the column level lineage. You've got the system tables so you can see what people are doing, what people are using, what data people are accessing. Just like a ton of things that you have to have Unity Catalog enabled to use. And not everyone's turned it on yet. Part of it was to do with needing someone with full global admin access on your tenant, which is really hard to actually get people to agree to. Part of it is just it feels like a lot of work. So now whenever there's a new workspace, it's automatically going to register a Unity Catalog as it turns itself on. And that kind of removes some of the previous barriers to turning Unity Catalog. So Look out for that. If you're spinning up a new workspace, it's going to actually roll out. So, really cool. If you're not using Unity Cat soon, you should be using it very, very, very soon. It's going to make you use it. Um, serverless SQL Warehouse has been rolled out a lot of places. Now, obviously, I am incredibly happy with this. That is massive news. So, well, for me, because I live in the UK and loads of our clients are using UK South. Uh, so, the fact that they can now use serverless, fantastic. Uh, if you're not in the UK and you're not in any of these regions, this is news that means nothing to you. So, yeah. big, big, big news for me is being able to use serverless in the UK South. Uh, so, yeah, great. As I said, a couple of big bits of news, especially for me. But, yeah. Okay, uh, other things that we can do. You can now hook up to a uh, Denmark place outside of things. So you can go and talk uh, to it, which is kind of cool. 
being able to plug in externally if you've got other different um essentially delta sharing connectors you can plug into things as in go in power bi and go via data rich marketplace to a delta sharing aspect cool uh you can search uh data rich marketplace lots of marketplace things but if you're in the search bar inside of data rich workplace and you search for something it'll go oh there's a thing in data rich marketplace that could be what you're after which is very cool um confidential computing vms we saw that go into preview uh previously so that is a new type of vm which essentially has a uh, complete hardware separation and encryption to make sure there's no data leakage even within that particular thing and the cloud provider themselves cannot see into the data that is on that machine so if you're doing incredibly secure incredibly um sensitive things and you need to make sure the vm itself is protected from the data center that it's in uh you've now got those as options you can use within um azure very very cool uh, it's changed to uh, how libraries are being used. So essentially, if you had workspace libraries, you'd be keeping it in DBFS, which is a bad thing. Essentially, we don't want any real customer data held in that little storage account that's created alongside any data rich workspace. So keeping it in the repos, keeping it uh, in a volume inside Unity Catalog, attaching it directly to your cluster, lots of different ways you can do it, but moving away from uh, doing that. And... Yeah, changed uh, the support for it in, depending on the cluster that you're on. So yeah, interesting things is going on. Again, 14.2 going GA, that's fine. Uh, a few change of behaviors in the UI. So if you're uploading a file, you can go, well, actually upload this to a volume. Volume doesn't exist. Create a volume for me and upload the file there. Uh, and then being able to delete file and download files as you're going through the Catalog Explorer. Essentially just making volumes a little bit more plumbed in to the Catalog Exploring experience. Makes sense. It's how we want people to do it. You can no longer turn off security in Databricks. I mean, that just makes sense. So you have the ability to configure, do I want security on clusters? Do I want security on jobs? Do I want security on workspaces? And you can say, no, I don't want any security in my Databricks workspace. I have no idea why you would ever turn any of those things off. I mean, it, just, it just makes sense. Uh, so they're now all turned on. Security is just enabled. You don't have to use it and if you don't use it it makes no difference but you can't turn it off so that just makes sense uh that's fine the big thing is that databricks vector search is now available to have a play with so if you've never heard of vector databases vector databases are all the rage at the moment because they were a big big part of the large language model story and everyone wants their own copilot their own chat gpt their own large language model somewhere gen ai is the hypiest hype in the world right now. Now, one of the big things, if you're using an off-the-shelf model, you're, using, you're sending it off to ChatGPT, you're using GPT 4.5, GPT 3.5 Turbo, whatever you're using, uh, and you don't want it to hallucinate. You're like, no, no, base it on this document. Uh, that's really hard, actually, getting the embeddings, getting the actual details about that document encoded in such a way you can include it inside a prompt is tricky, and that's what vector databases do. Way of storing embeddings and storing similar similarity of embedding. So when you're saying this is a thing I'm searching about, it knows which bit of the document, which chunk to bring back and give as context to the prompt. So vector search is their own vector store based inside Databricks that you can build on top of a delta table in Unity Catalog. So if you've got a delta table, you gotta just say, well, turn this into a vector search index and keep it up to date as I update that delta table. And then when I'm building out a large language language model interaction. I can say, we'll use that vector search, get the results back, and include that in my prompt. And therefore, I don't need to download and fine tune and host my own large language model. I can make an off the shelf one accurate using my own data that I only send as part of my prompt. So it's encrypted, it's not actually sent to the people who use it. Oh, so very cool. Definitely be doing a video digging into how Data Vector Search works soon. Uh, obviously, you're seeing things on the Azure side. We've seen uh, Cognitive Search got renamed to AI Search, I think. Can't remember the name of it. But again, there's lots of different conversations about where the best vector search database is. Are you going outside and using like Pinecone? Loads of arguments about which one it is. Interesting to see Databricks coming in and saying, there's just one part of your data catalog that you can just say, well, actually make one on top of that Delta table. It's already inside your Unity catalog. So you don't need to think about chunking your data and all that other stuff that comes with vectorization. So yeah, interesting. Lots of stuff going on. Actually, more than I thought. Now that I say that, there's quite a lot in there. Quite a lot of interesting little tidbits actually happening this month. 
Now, Dirty Rich Runtime 14.2. So moving on, there's a few new things that we've got in there. Um, there was bad things that used to break. <laughs> That's not been fixed. Good. Um, some things to do with uh, Proto Weapon Avro when you're kind of moving things back and forth, specifically when using Spark Connect. There was a funny thing where basically with 14.0 coming out, they disabled the ability to use for each batch in the streaming listener. And that for me is like, well, we use for each batch all the time. Anytime we want to do a streaming merge into a table as part of our stream want, stream first architectures, we use for each batch. We can now use it again. So obviously I'm very happy that that's back. That is good. Um, relevant concurrency is GA and on by default. So the previous concurrency approach inside of uh, Spark essentially has optimistic write concurrency at the file level. So if I've got two things trying to write to the same delta table and they look at each other and go, no, you're going to hit that pocket file, you're going to hit that pocket file. It's fine, we're not going to touch anything that we're both looking at. With deletion vectors coming in, essentially we can edit the same pocket file and go, well, I'm going to delete those two records, I'm going to delete those two records. Cool, we can do that. We're not actually getting in each other's way. So the granularity of concurrency has just shrunk a bit, meaning I'm less likely to get concurrency blockers where one thing's trying to update the same file as another, meaning things should generally be a bit faster. Great. All good. So only works if you don't have partitioning, uh, but you can have liquid clustering and there's other things that are being turned on. It's turned on by default. So as soon as you've got deletion vectors turned on, suddenly row level uh, concurrency works. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can have shallow clone external tables. So rather than manage tables, if you can external tables, you need to catalog. You can now do a metadata only clone of that. Shallow clone is super useful for testing things in production without actually testing things in production. Uh, so we see that actually happening quite a lot. Um, there's a new caching algorithm to make things faster across nodes. Great. Essentially, by the sound of it, cost of scaling events, slow things down. It's now going to go faster because of uh, how it actually thinks about that stuff and how it actually predicts things before and after scaling. Good. I've not had a dig at all into how that's going to work, but interesting stuff. Uh, more things to do with the from Avro, especially if using uh, schema tables. Not had a look at that at all. And yeah, statistics are going much, much faster if you are converting from existing things. So if you're trying to turn a massive uh, load of parquet or a massive load of iceberg and say, well, convert that into a delta table, it has to do that thing where it gets the minimum and maximum value for the first 32 columns by default to put into the delta transaction log. Now that used to take, take a little while, be a little bit slower. They've made that 10 times faster if you've got a small cluster trying to turn an existing parquet file into a delta table just because it used to take a long time to do that stats collection. So, cool. Final link, streamer queries are going to do better push down filters on if you're coming across a delta source and should be slightly better at pulling that stuff across and working into how it's working out its micro batches. So, yeah, a few little things in there. Certainly for me, the for each batch support coming back is huge. Uh, and a few interesting things coming on. Curious how many people have got so many small writes going on on top of a Delta table that they're going to see roll over concurrency just immediately come in. Most of the time we're seeing people have fairly chunky batch workloads. So if you've got multiple streams going on, multiple things trying to update uh, the same Delta table, that's when you're going to see the real impact come here. And it's, you know, the question of, are they trying to make it better for things like OLTP? Is that is that their grand plan of going, it's not just analytics, we do more stuff with it. I don't know. We will see what goes on there. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Obviously, Vector Search is kind of the big flagship headline that's actually sort of come out. There's other stuff that's been announced that's going to be in the December one, but I'm going to do some videos about things like lake house monitoring before then anyway, because it's so cool. And yeah, I think just take a look through the results. As always, look at the notes yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Maybe there's some things I look at and go, well, that's not that important. And you go, no, we've been waiting for that for months. And maybe there's things like serverless being <laughs> rolled out in UK South, which I've been waiting for so long. That means a lot to me, means nothing to you. That is absolutely fine. <sighs> cool. So I have plans. There will be more videos before the year is out. Do not worry. So we'll catch up soon. All right. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.